welcome once again to EWTN's coverage. This is the closing main door of the papal residence in Castel Gandolfo. That's where the Pope is now. Earlier today, he helicoptered over there. That's where he is. And uh, we are going to see the final real ceremony as part of our coverage of the final day of the papacy of Benedict the 16th. In fact, basically, I'm here with Tom Nash in studios. Shortly, we'll join Joan Lewis and Mary Shevlin's back in Rome uh, for our coverage to continue. I'm here with Tom from uh, our theological department here at EWTN, Tom. And uh, we're not even talking about the final day virtually anymore. We're talking about the final minutes or the final hours. Right? Final minutes, yes, because we're less than 15 minutes away. And uh, we've been going through this last day or so. The Pope has spoken to the Cardinals today. And now we've seen him, his last appearance was in our last uh, time of coverage. And now what we'll see is the close of his pontificate when the uh, Swiss Guard walk away from it, indicating that his pontificate is over and the seat is now vacant. And now we look forward to the conclave. So sober times, but yet, as the Pope told us, the heart of the church is Jesus Christ. And so we have that faith right. that it continues on. Right, as you With say, really, really a day of mixed emotions. Sure. I mean, where we're, you know, we're very proud of him uh, for doing what he believes our Lord wants him to do. And, and I guess that quote that was thrown out about the idea of uh, wishing that people would find what he has found essentially, which is a life centered around Jesus Christ. This is true. And I think as well, you know, we talked about it's not the same as his death, but we're not going to be seeing him so much mm -hmm. uh, because he's going to be first at Castel Gandolfo, then in the Vatican City at the monastery and we won't be seeing him as much. Right. So there's a, there's a sadness there, but we can there's know that he'll, there is yeah, a loss, and, right. but that he is in solidarity with us, even though we do, will not see him so much because as he said, he is going to be at the foot of the cross in a different way, interceding in prayer for us, for the church and uh, therefore th for the world. Right, and just before we go out to Mary and Joan, just a reminder about some of the events coming up tonight, the Basilica Mass of Thanksgiving for the ministry of Pope Benedict the 16th. We've got a new world over with Raymond Arroyo and Rob Royal, uh, and also Roma Dowdy's featured on that program, and a special musical tribute to Pope Benedict the 16th as well. And tomorrow, you'll see Joan Lewis's Rome Dispatch get underway. But we don't have to wait till tomorrow. We're going to join once again our dynamic duo of, of Vaticanistas. High atop Vatican City, Joan Lewis and Mary Shovlin. Hello. Good, good evening, Doug. It's wonderful to be back here with you. But like you said, the the mixed emotions and mm -hmm. mine especially because of living so near to St. Peter's Square. Behind us you can see the magnificent facade of, of the Basilica and all the lights of St. Peter's Basilica and a lot of lights in some of the Vatican offices. But what we can't see tonight and we won't see for weeks to come until there's a new Pope are the lights on the Apostolic Palace, the residence, the top floor of the Pope. They're always lit up, second window in the Pope's study, third window in on the top, his uh, secretary's study. They're always on at night. They're dim. They're out tonight. So the papal uh, room apartments have been sealed. And um, actually they're going to be formally sealed at 8 o'clock as we're going to also see the gates of the Castel Gandolfo Palace be closed at 8 o'clock. So um, I'm so used to going by this square, living three blocks away, I come so often. And to walk by now at night and not see those lights is uh, a little difficult, but we're not celebrating, uh, we're not marking a death, we're celebrating a life. Exactly, Joan, and I watched with emotion as you did the helicopter flying oh. over Rome today and the Holy Father flies over my home literally. I saw the helicopter ascend and, and go forth and it was interesting. You could see on all of the rooftops throughout the city, uh, nuns and priests, the seminarians with their flags waving and uh, everyone just went to their rooftops all over Rome and just to wave goodbye. And, you know, tears, young people and old alike, everyone. But I, people were asking me, why are we sad? It's just strange. Like we said, no one has passed away. But it's because we didn't want him to leave. And I thought that was the best sure. way to describe our sadness, that we didn't want him to leave. And, and, you know, in several minutes, we are covering right now, in several minutes, 
the doors, as we've said several times, of the Apostolic Palace will be closed. The Swiss Guards will leave because their prime duty in life is to protect and defend exactly. the person of the Roman Pontiff. Right. The Roman Pontiff at 8 o'clock will no longer be the Roman Pontiff. And Mary, I don't know if, if you heard this when we went on the air. Just before the bells rang at 8 o'clock on St. Peter's Basilica, yeah. the bell rang for a few seconds on the chapel in Vatican City that is the Swiss Guard Chapel. The Swiss Chapel. Guard Chapel. Oh, it's and so they're well, terminating. Church bells around the city were ringing. I, all, all day I, I, long. Here I mean, you can hear the Vatican bells, yeah. but they were ringing all over the city. Uh, definitely. And we see these images now of the Swiss Guard, who, as Joan mentioned, it is their sole job in life to protect the person of the Holy Father. He will, of course, be provided protection after this, but the I Swiss Guards will yeah. come back to Rome and await the election of the new pontiff. So. This is an emotional moment for them as well. They they really do love dearly every Holy and Father. And serving serving yeah. the Holy Father. They sign up for two years and may renew every two years until a maximum, I think the maximum, has been moved up to 30 years. And right. there's a couple that have that kind of service. They spend several hours at a time. Uh, any of our viewers who have been to Vatican City have seen, of course, yeah. the guards at the gates uh, to the Vatican, but they they do stand there for like a couple hours at a time. And part of their training, a former Swiss Guard friend of mine told me, part of their training is how not to think of how much time is left on your watch. Exactly. Think of things that please you, yeah. the Holy Father, your job, your family, exactly. a summer vacation. That's and, a beautiful... Or say yeah. a rosary. Or say a rosary, and, and, they, and they often do their, their... And make the time, you know, go by. And so we see them checking their check, watches checking their and watch. how much time. And it is a little, literally a matter of minutes here. And Castel Gandolfo, it's interesting to note, has been the scene of the end of three papacies. Uh, before this, Paul VI passed away here in August. And he had a heart attack and died here, Castel Gandolfo. And so, yet again, Castel Gandolfo is the scene for the end of a, a pontificate with a pontiff who was very much alive and praying for each one of us as he enters this new phase, as he goes up the Mount of Prayer, as he told us. Well, and I think we have to remind um, our, our viewers, Mary, that the um, when in minutes, seconds, the doors close, he is no longer pontiff. However, his title will be His Holiness Benedict the Sixteenth. Pope Emeritus or Roman Pontiff Emeritus? I did get some emails today, people yeah. asking me that. They, they still want to write we're, letters. We're still finding the language. Yes. We're still finding the words to use. Uh, for right. the, and you can see the hundreds of photographers. Joan, weren't you moved by the crowd at Castel Gandolfo today? Yes, yeah. I, would, I would, didn't know. I didn't know how many would be able to get there and just the just piazza was filled. hanging out the windows with their flags and their signs. Um, Benedict, we're with you. We're with you. We are yeah. always with you. What about so the forth. words he said oh, from the, from from the, the balcony? Heart, from, and right. from his heart. Exactly. He did exactly. not have a printed text telling the people how much he loves them, how much they've always meant to him, yeah. to his closeness. Oh, sure. But, you know, yeah. I mean, all of us know in life when you're ill or you've got a challenge in front of you, however powerful, to know you've got people beside you yes. who pray for you, who love you, et cetera. It has to be very rewarding to him. And he's, and, he's yeah. sacrificed so much. What a faithful servant that he is for the Catholic Church. And it's, it's nice that they're able to see that appreciation uh, for the lot of sacrifice that they dedicate their whole lives to the church. So we see some members Officials, coming out. one or two look like the members of the gendarmes. And the to, Swiss to guards me. are full at full attention. This is their job. They're taking it very seriously. Very emotional for them. Did you see the Pope's driver today, Joan, as they were in the court, Cortile San Damaso, the yes. St. Damaso's courtyard? He was emotional. He broke down and then drove the Holy Father to the heliport here in Vatican City. It's just... Well, it had to be a very difficult day for... This is the parish church. Par on St. The, Thomas Villanova. On the square mm -hmm. just outside where the Holy Father went in today. This is the parish church. Open it can't be prayer. 200 feet from the front door. It's exactly. that. Very yeah. small piazza. Mm -hmm. it, it's, one, it's wonderful if you're ever visiting Rome to hang and, out there. And our viewers can see that now. So the townspeople had their time and this historic moment very historic, is turned over to the media.
Which is wonderful. And by the way, we did get some statistics today that okay. 3,641 journalists have been accredited for this period and for the conclave from 61 countries and 24 languages. It's unthinkable, isn't it? And they haven't even stopped accrediting yet. That's oh, no. so far. These are the numbers so far. So. Uh, they, you, you see them all over Rome. I wish we could almost turn the cameras around and let you see the rooftops all facing the Vatican on right. the street. There are scaffoldings everywhere and, and we see them here at Castle Gandolfo and here we are, the media covering these last few moments of the pontificate of Pope Benedict the 16th. And we're so glad that you could join us from wherever you're watching us around the world as we live this moment together. Exactly. The. Um Building itself is, that's Dr. S uh, Saverio Petrillo on the left who just le uh, came out of that picture. He's the director of mm -hmm. the uh, papal villas at, at Casta Gandolfo because there are more than, uh, there's more than one building other than the Apostolic Palace associated with uh, Casta Gandolfo. So he just walked away and he was telling us the other day, I took some pictures on our visit last week yeah. to Casta Gandolfo and there is one of them where you see the, the facade, the gate closed before they brought us in. And then I did some close-ups of there's, there is the inside of the gate and really looks like something, well, the palace was designed in the 1600s, so. Like, a, like most buildings around here, we can And then these big that. doors have smaller doors within them. Exactly. So if just one or two persons have to leave, they go through the smaller part. And, and then here is the outside of that same door that um, at the and, palace, and which the I visited last week. Yeah, waiting outside, and and it's just a matter of moments before the doors close. And how symbolic that the doors close, signifying that end. This the, the sea of, of Peter will of be it, vacant, sure. and uh, and we look towards the future, uh, to over the next few weeks to it, see who the Holy Spirit will choose. Well, and it'll be interesting to kind of know. Who gives the signal? You know, is is there? A, <clears throat> excuse me. And the gendarme, the Swiss Guard's office is immediately to the right of our picture, where that you can see that man standing. And oh, that's uh, Francesco, the photographer. Yeah, where, he's omnipresent. Francesco yes. is a Roberto Romano photographer who has covered this pontificate. A wonderful Look at eight the years. Hmm. Pope Benedict mentioned yesterday a lack of privacy in the role of pontiff and yeah. here's a great example of that but thanks to the media of course we're able to live this moment together and capture this historic moment we are living history right now it almost makes you want to pray doesn't it I, i'm guessing exactly. at eight o'clock benedict and monsignor georg will be in the chapel yes you know yeah. And we know he has his piano out here at Castle Gandolfo. He enjoys playing his piano in the evenings. And he loves coming out here, you know, on his whole time as Pope. He, he came out for several months. He would come every summer for several months during the summer. Come back late September, maybe even early October, just to beat the Roman heat. And he, I'm kind of wondering if there will be a bell or who's the official timekeeper right. it has to be well, the, with swiss. the swiss if yes. the swiss are keeping the time with the german pontiff it'll be on time folks i think we are coming up on it my my watch is showing about 1 minute but i could be off we see the gentleman taking positions to close the door There's a silence, Amazing. isn't there, Joan? I just going to say, yeah, there's and, a and silence. Yeah. we might just even give our viewers a, a moment to appreciate the history yeah. we're all living.
Yeah. Well, I'll let Joan talk. I don't think I can. I'm not <laughs> sure I can either. It was a moment. It, it was a moment of huge silence. I mean, you heard the people say "Viva il Papa," but just look at the media. It was a religious, solemn silence. Now I think we literally see the changing of the guard. Swiss guard to the Carabinieri, the Vatican gendarmes. The handing over of security detail from the Swiss guard to the Vatican police. So the Swiss guards have officially left, and here come the gendarmerie. That's the director of the papal villa on the right, and we saw head of the Vatican gendarmes next to them before they marched to the door, Domenico Gianni. So they are there, officially guarding now. The Holy Father, they have taken over from the Swiss Guard, and the Holy Father, the Holy See is now vacant, Joan. Yes, it is. The Holy See is vacant. We do not have a reigning pope. We're interregnum. Well, between one reign Rain to the next, the we are in the interregnum, uh, a historic moment, as we say, a loving goodbye to this papacy. And we ask the prayers of the emeritus pope, the Holy Father. The man who just resigned the papacy freely of his own will is the first to freely resign since Celestine V in 1294. One thing Celestine did not have that Benedict had and gave us his final gift today was his final tweet as Benedict XVI. Thank you for your love and support. May you always experience the joy that comes from putting Christ at the center of your lives. What a gift. What a mini amazing catechesis. And again, and, that's, and yesterday's. And the, and the words, just all of his words have been so loving today and just full of heartfelt yeah. wishes for each one of us. And it's just a, just a moving moment. And again, that sadness is because we didn't want him to go. I don't know how else to describe it. And, uh, and it's tough knowing, uh, yeah. knowing that he's still alive, but we won't see him. I think yes. that's, the, that's yes. the difficult part for, I, for so many of us, really. It, it's solemn, it's history, it's so many things tonight. Mary. It is, it is, and well, now we look to the future. We, uh, Pope Benedict is here in Castel Gandolfo, Pope Emeritus, Benedict Roman Pontiff we, Emeritus. And we can he, say Benedict the Sixteenth. Exactly, Benedict he, XVI, right. For history, he will always have that name as pontiff. And he's here praying for us now, praying for his cardinals that he told them today, I will be praying for you in a special way in the coming days. The task now falls to them. The task is on their shoulders as a college to come together to pray yeah. and to be open to the Holy Spirit to see who the next driver of the bark of Peter will be, who is going to steer the ship of the Catholic Church. And he pledged obedience. Wasn't that he lovely? He is now that... going to be a member of the faithful, yeah. as we are, as the rest of the crew is. He's simply on a pilgrimage. He said it was the last stage of his pilgrimage, yeah. but he has pledged obedience to the next pope. Does it get any more humble or from beautiful pope than that? I don't pilgrim. think so. From pope to pilgrim, and how humble. Again, just marking that humility of the Holy Father. We just Father, uh, great viewed humility. here the Swiss guards in the Apostolic Palace's courtyard shaking hands with the uh, gendarmes who have taken over, have taken over their duties. And almost simultaneously with the closing of the door, yes. we must remind people that very simple seals were placed at 8 o'clock on the papal apartments right in, um, right. and on the elevator by the way, that leads to the papal apartments oh at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Yes, the, the, so. the seal of the interregnum and uh, 
So what will happen behind those seals is the, you know, the Holy Father's effects, whatever he left behind will be removed and so on. And then when the new Pope comes, the seals will be broken. And Mary, it's my understanding yes. that the flag yes. in the Sede Vacante, the yellow and white Vatican flag, with the papal crest in the white part yes. on, on the right as you're looking at it, that the triple tiara is taken off the crest. Oh. So all you have are the, the crossed gold and okay. silver keys. The keys, of course, signifying the, the temporal power. Temporal and heavenly, the, and, uh, the earthly and heavenly here. power. Well, there it is. There's the closed door on the papal summer residence in Castel Gandolfo. Pope Benedict's papacy officially at an end now. We officially have a vacant see in the Vatican uh -huh. as we begin to pray. We well, have some rooms lit up there. That's good to know. And the papal does have, we, uh, the papal apartments here do have what he has here yes. in Rome. The, the basics are there, the living room, dining oh, sure. room, bedroom, chapel, yeah. study, and so forth. People were, were, were remarking how the Holy Father will now get a stipend yes. uh, of 2,500 euro a month now that he is uh, no oh, longer. Oh my word, he's a, he's a pensionato. <laughs> he's a pensionato. Which is Italian for a retired person. Right, yes. and so <clears throat> he's, uh, again, a pilgrim living a life of prayer. And he's here this evening praying for us and praying for all of you watching this evening. We got another blessing, didn't we, Joan? Yeah. At the end, as he was on the terrace this afternoon when he just arrived in Castle Gandolfo, we got one more blessing. All of us who saw Pope. that, the final blessing yeah. of, of this um, Pontiff Emeritus now. Roman Pontiff Emeritus is the other title that can be used with him. And these are just images of the Papal Palace in Castel Gandolfo as Pope Benedict resides there this evening. You'll probably have a nice cena dinner with the Monsignor so. Georg and the staff there as he begins about a two month sojourn is that uh, while they finish Until they finish the monastery the modern exactly. ecclesia here in the vatican and of course while and the Paul conclave Body is going said on this afternoon yeah. on our coverage of the pope's departure from um from the vatican this vatican uh, paul body said actually he felt that part of pope benedict's desire to be a casa gandalfo for two months was more than just waiting for the monastery to be fixed he felt that Pope Benedict, in his humility, didn't want to be physically nearby the cardinals yes. as they yes. elect his own successor. Kind of really remove himself in all senses, even physically, from the surroundings okay. while the new pope takes helm. Yes, Doug, we're, we're here. We are close to everything. We are close to St. Peter's. We're close to the Pope's residence. We're not far from Castel Gandolfo. What has this been like for you all? Well, I think, Joan, that, uh, you know, f uh, for the whole crew here uh, at EW10, it's an emotional situation. But again, uh, you know, we are a little distanced from it. Uh, but uh, those were powerful, powerful images we just saw a few minutes ago. Uh, putting a sort of a coda, kind of a finality to everything, uh, kind of something you intellectually understand is going to happen, but emotionally have to deal with when it actually does happen, and it hits you, and I'm sure it hits, it's hitting you, uh, both of you, harder than it's probably hitting us, and maybe it'll take a little longer for it to sink in for us uh, because of uh, the distance. But let me mention a couple of things I, I thought that were interesting uh, about the Swiss Guard too for people who watch EWTN is that to remind them on Life on the Rock, we're gonna actually be doing a live uh, Life on the Rock uh, next week uh, with Father Mark, who's gonna be in Rome, but also uh, we uh, have Andreas Widmar, who I know that uh, uh, I'm sure both of you are familiar with who wrote that book, uh, The CEO and the Pope, and uh, he's, he's on the show. And actually, I had a chance to interview him, and that interview is going to run within the next couple of weeks as well. So it was kind of interesting about the whole story about the Swiss Guards and the fact that the Swiss Guards, uh, you know, are, are people who come from Switzerland and that they don't necessarily, while I was thinking about what they were doing and you were saying praying the rosary, he was kind of talking about how the fact is that it's not like you take a catechesis test when you come. So some of the Swiss guards who come, come many times very secular and, and will get more religious. And he says, sometimes it goes the other way. It's kind of interesting. What has been your, your experience uh, in relating to the Swiss guards who we just saw uh, step down? It, well, I have to tell you, Doug, actually it was Andreas who when we first met and he was telling me stories about being a Swiss guard and I was interviewing him, um, 
he was the one who told me how he had to learn to be trained to stand there for these long hours and maybe think about secular things and how that training that standing there and other people's older people's advice to him about how to handle those two hours you're standing on your feet and in the cold and or whatever so yeah, it his, can be grueling for yes. sure. Uh, some of the guards that I've met over the years, and they, like you said, they come in maybe with a more secular mindset because this is uh, also an option for the military service, which is mandatory. So they choose, they can choose to do the two years here in Rome. So they come in maybe just trying to get rid of their, doing their military service uh, for their national duty. And it changes. So they, yeah. they leave changed for sure. So many come back every May 6th, which is when they're sworn in. They come back, the alumni, if you will, for the Swiss Guard, with their families, and they talk about it as the best time in their lives. Very, very wonderful formative years for these young men. And I think they find out that, is, I guess I'm kind of summarizing what you said, but basically I think they find out that they get more than they, than they you know, give from the church, from the Holy right. Father. And some of the stories, the wonderful stories, and Andreas has them, of guarding the papal palace, uh, mm -hmm. guarding, excuse me, the right, the Pope's apartment right, right outside, outside of his door. door. Right. And, um, what an honor. I mean, what his an first honor. Christmas. Oh. It, and of course, Andreas is six foot eight. You can't miss you can't Andreas. Miss him, right? <laughs> and his very first Christmas, he was very young, very lonesome, missed his family. He was thinking about being home with his family. And um, the, he's supposed to accompany the Pope to Midnight Mass in St. Peter's. And so the Pope comes out and he senses in Andreas, he can see the red eyes, he senses the tears, and he asks this young man what his name is and talks to him. And then John Paul just put his arm on his shoulder and he said, no, I guess his arm, and he said, you're missing your family. This is your first Christmas away from home, isn't it? So the wonderful sensitivity of, in this case, of course, it was yeah. John Paul. Because yeah, Andreas access. was here in the 80s, yeah. Incredible privilege, yeah. and they, say, they, they talk about it's the best time of their lives and the, and the stories, and it's real, okay. it's grueling work. I mean, they are it up is. around the clock. It's not like they're just out in the square looking no. you know, ceremonial. It, it's real protection duty. And they live in quarters that would we would probably not envy, so. Right, um, exactly. Well, I, I think we've all had a big day, an emotional day. Very There's emotional. No further event or coverage for which we're grateful just for the emotions f yes. from Rome. So, Doug, I think I'll just uh, give this back to you in studio in Birmingham from our, our set here in Rome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we really, really appreciate the great work that you have done all day, Joan, and Mary as well in the last couple of days and the work ahead uh, with Joan's program, her Rome Dispatch and also for radio and for Mary, who will be helping out on all the productions coming up next week. And uh, obviously, we, we believe this was a great way for us to really start things off. For, and I'm here with Tom Nash in the studio, but really, uh, what's just the beginning of a process. We, in a sense, have closed the book on Benedict XVI and now have opened the book on who the next pope will be, which we shall know. Uh, we believe certainly within the next three weeks or so. Yes, and uh, as Joan and Mary were saying, very historic. I mean, it's been, my goodness, uh, so many years since we've had something like St. Celestine V in 1294, then slightly more recently, Gregory the Twelfth to begin the end of the Western Schism. That's a long time, 600 years since the last time. But, uh, and it's just, uh, it, when you see those doors close, it just really, makes there's a finality to it the mm -hmm. pictures even I mean we're not there but seeing those images make it really hit home and uh, thus you don't need to be there you need to be united with the church and you can sense that and, and the sadness and yet a gratefulness for what this Pope has done in his almost eight years of his pontificate and also a hope and looking forward that Christ will continue to lead his ship forward and that uh, by Holy Week the beginning of Holy Week we should have the 266th Pope and uh, looking forward to who that man will be. Right, and we have uh, a lot of events coming up, obviously, from our own events as far as the Basilica tonight. Uh, there's a Thanksgiving uh, for the ministry of Benedict XVI. There's a Mass from the Basilica. There's that World Over special with Raymond Arroyo that's on tonight, so you can look for that. There's also the Truth and Beauty, a musical tribute to Pope Benedict XVI, we mentioned also from the Basilica. 
And of course, so we just saw Joan and she's going to start her Rome dispatch program starting tomorrow. And uh, I think I might be seeing her a little bit tomorrow about that. And then we really move on to uh, some pretty heavy duty coverage kicking off next week. There'll be a little bit of a lull, but we're going to stay there. We're, we're, we're here for the duration. A special world over for Rome next Thursday, March 7th. You won't want to miss it with Raymond Arroyo. And then Ray starts his Live from the Vatican series with Raymond Arroyo starting on that Friday. Likewise, we'll be kicking off our EWTN Vatican Daily program with Colleen Carroll Campbell also that Friday. And Colleen's going to be uh, the anchor for our upcoming uh, news program out of Washington in uh, this summer that will go in tandem with Ray's show the world over. It's going to be an interesting mix uh, for us to really expand our news coverage. And just a reminder that EWTN is everywhere. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, uh, the radio apps uh, for your smartphone. We want to be there providing you with the kind of coverage you can trust. And check out our website, www.ewtn.com. And of course, to learn more about the Interregnum and Conclave, visit our website. And it's EWTN.com forward slash Holy See slash Interregnum. And uh, we just have so much still ahead. And I just want to remind everybody that uh, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of people, Joan Lewis, Mary Shovlin, Peter Gagnon, John Kuklinski, our Spanish team uh, with Alejandro Bermudez, Enrique de Pratt, Martin Weiler on the, on the German side. Those are people on the ground making this happen here. Your, yourself, Tom, and certainly our great crew here, Steve Beaumont, our directors, uh, all working together in multiple languages to make this happen. It's a lot of work. We do it because it's Mother's mission. We're doing the best we can to maintain that because we love the Holy Father. We love the truth of the church. And uh, we can only do it because you're our family and you support our work. So don't forget to keep us between your gas and electric bill. We know things are tough, but uh, this is the kind of thing that really does cost a lot of money. If we want to do the right thing and do it properly and show the proper service and support for our present, our recently present Holy Father and the one to come. And thank you so much, Tom. It's great having oh, you here. Good to being with you. It's, uh, it's an end of one pontificate and yet we know the church continues and we look forward to the Holy Spirit guiding the uh, cardinal electors as they make right. their choice and uh, sustain the church into the future. Praise God. That's right. And the bark of Peter sails on and hopefully We'll get to see who the next uh, captain is going to be very shortly. This is Doug Keck. Thank you so much for joining us right here on EWTN. Stay with us throughout the month of March. <laughs>